Hello everyone, Dragos Japan, long time no see, I know I've, uh, I've had a lot of stuff going on. I've been moving apartments and actually that's what this video is going to be about today, is talking about different Japanese style apartments. Uh, in Japan, there's lots and lots of different kinds of apartments that you can go and actually rent, own, or even live in here. Uh, traditionally, you're going to have three kinds. You're going to have uh, what's called like a Leo Palace, which is really like your cheapest place to stay. You have what's called a mansion, which is going to be a bigger apartment complex more rooms, and then you actually have a house, which actually some houses are actually duplexes or townhouses like you'll find in America or other countries, uh, maybe Australia, maybe Europe, uh, places where they kind of use the townhouse more than here. There's very few here, I've seen a few, but it's not as common. So first let's talk about the different levels of pretty much Japanese apartments. So we'll start off with the very basic, which is 1R. A one hour room is going to be very, very small. It's going to look very similar to this picture right here. Um, they're going to be very small. They're going to have one room, literally, is all it has. It might have a gas burner. It might not have a gas burner, depending upon who your landlord is and where you'll find it. Those are going to be typically found more or less if you're living in, say, a dormitory, uh, maybe a uh, one of the places that a lot of the JET or ALT stay in, the smaller kind of apartment because they traditionally don't cook as much, they're going to be eating out at the convenience store, things like that. So that's going to be kind of where that falls into play. Uh, next, we're going to go with 1DK. Well, I'm sorry, 1D. That's going to be more common. So 1D means one dining room. Um, if you're going to hear, you're going to hear these three acronyms, sorry about that, in this video. When we talk about uh, D, K, and L, each of these letters identifies a different kind of room. So D, very basic, is gonna stand for your dining room. This is gonna be very common. Uh, if you see one D, that means one dining room. Uh, if you say one K, it's gonna have one kitchen. So K is for kitchen. And L is gonna be your living room, which is gonna be your standard idea. Uh, they do come from one, two, and three different variations. Uh, you'll see a lot of these. So let's talk about the one uh, pretty much D first. This is one's gonna actually have a dining room. So in essence, this room is very, very limited. I've only seen a few here in Japan. They're kind of very, very old school. You're gonna have your bathroom, and then you're gonna have one dining room, and then a small, small area is gonna be located in the room for your, pretty much like where you're gonna sleep if you don't always sleep in your living room, which is normally more common for, I'd say Japanese or people living here uh, as an ALT or someone of that nature. Uh, secondly, you're gonna have the next one, which is going to be a 1DK. So this one means that you have one dining room kitchen. So this one means that your dining room and your kitchen is actually going to be one room, but instead of being compounded, it's going to be a little bit longer. Um, could be a very small apartment. They're going to be a little bit older because these kind of things have kind of transitioned a little bit away where they're going with things like a Leo Palace, which is a 1LDK, has a living room, dining room, kitchen with the separated bathroom or joint bathroom, depending upon what you go with. Uh, depends on budget, depends on what you can afford. Uh, now, let's look at what comes next, which is the 1LDK. Like I just said, this covers all branches. You have a living room, a dining room, and a kitchen. These come in two different styles. Um, I lived in uh, Metahama here in Fukuoka before I came back. There, when I was there, I actually had what's called a loft style. So you come in, your bed is actually above the entrance to your house. So it creates kind of a little bit of a weird situation when you want to go to bed because you have to climb up a ladder, go sleep over the door. It's a very strange um, flavors of life. My girlfriend, as you guys know, also lived in uh, that kind of style. It can be challenging to live in a loft style. Um, you do get more space, but you do have to like climb upstairs to go to bed. Uh, the other style with an LDK is you're going to be staying normally in a flat bottom. They can become furnished or unfurnished, depends upon what you like. Uh, furnished is a little bit better, I think, because then you don't have to worry about getting a TV and all the other stuff, a fridge. That's very expensive here, as we've talked about in other videos, appliances, things like that. But when you look strictly at, um, especially for 1LDKs, for size, I stayed at uh, Leo Palace, and I'm using this as my best reference because I haven't stayed anywhere else, that this room actually had a bed. So uh, the basic floor was here, and then you actually had a bed built into the wall with steps which kind of ate up part of your room, but it was a little bit nicer because you actually had an area to sleep in. It's not a loft style, so you just have strictly one room to come in, one way out. Bathroom was separated from the shower, but that is still common here, I'd say in more places. Japanese really like that separation of the bathroom and the toilet, which 
Westerner, doesn't bother me a bit. Uh, so now let's look at the number other uh, numbers. So you have a 2DK. So these rooms are going to be a little bit bigger. Uh, traditionally, they're going to have more space. You're going to only have your dining room, which is going to be located with your kitchen. Then you're going to actually have two separate rooms at the, actually in the apartment. So you can either be across from each other or next to each other. Depends on the style and layout of your building. Uh, I've seen all kinds here. Some have some really crazy, wacky designs. They got really creative, I think, uh, with architecture, trying to make it more fun and interesting. So just depending upon the size of the apartment, depends upon what scenario or area you would say you would see this in more or less uh, when now we get to my favorite part which you get the two LDK now these ones are gonna be a lot bigger because the rooms are gonna be a little bit more less conjoined you're gonna actually have more space um, the big challenge is is when you look at two LDKs and three LDKs you're gonna have a big difference in price difference normally uh, if it's a busy area like Tokyo or Fukuoka, the closer you are to the center of the city, the more expensive, but it doesn't really play that much of a price difference when you're talking about what you pay for a one LDK versus a two or three. It's gonna be actually cheaper to just get a bigger apartment, share the rooms if you want, or just for more space. I, as you guys know, I complained a lot about my last apartment, it's way too small. With the advancement of getting a new apartment, which uh, it's a little bit bigger, we'll say that, it's a lot nicer. Uh, I approve of this room much more. Uh, we actually have lights here. Light's a little dark in here. I'll try, I might have to change the light in here. We'll see, because this one's kind of a sunlight kind of light, so it's a little different than what I'm used to. Um, and now, so this goes the same thing. So two LDK, you have two DK, two D, two LDK. Those are that bracket. Now we get to my favorite, which is the threes, because these are the biggest ones they offer next to the fours. There is a four, but they're very, very rare. I've only seen a few here at all and they're really over the top priced uh, next it's gonna be the same bracket you're gonna see right here uh, it's gonna be 3 LDK 3 DK it's gonna be the same setup you're just adding one extra room to each situation uh, when you look at the LDK rooms they're gonna be uh, the 3 LDK I think is a lot better I mean it is one extra room but if you're having like a party or you're having friends over and you have, you're actually constantly using your living room or kitchen it's the most effective uh, if you're not using it, then you can go with the 3DK, which is just the same. You just have three rooms. They're going to depend upon where you are. Um, but just remember, make sure you guys pay, remember the three ones, L, D, and K. Those are your important points to remember and focus on when you're looking for an apartment or moving here in Japan. We've seen that a lot. Uh, lastly is the 4LDK. I've never seen a 4DK. I've only seen a 4LDK listed. They could be here. But I have not. If I find one, I'll make sure I put a link or something in the description box so you guys can kind of see what it looks like. I've never seen one. I've only seen the 4LDK layout uh, on most websites. All it is, same situation, you're just going to have four rooms. It's going to be a really big, big area. Uh, traditionally, if you've got kids or a big family or realistically, if you're four or five teachers wanting to share a place, that's kind of the best bet because you can get it, move in, you can each get your own room. Granted, most of the rooms will not have a door. Um, the apartment we live in now actually has sliding doors, so there's no lock, there's no security. So if you're worried or kind of like that, you're gonna feel a little uneasy. Uh, you would need a really big fridge though. If you got four people living there, you need a bigger fridge. Uh, you just have to kind of play with the numbers and see how it all works out uh, in essence with that. Uh, but those are the different things. Now the price points are gonna change as we talked about. Um, I'm going to actually kind of put a few prices over here so you guys can kind of see the difference for what some of the apartments range. Uh, and as you're going to find out, it's actually cheaper to get a bigger apartment than a smaller apartment. Apartment, And that's going to seem very strange, but when the price difference is not so much, then you can kind of register why. This is key to understanding what's what you're paying for, in essence. Um, apartments here are very expensive. Um, they can range all the way up to about $1,500 or 150,000 yen a month, depending on where you live and the size. Uh, trust me, that price is not out of the ballpark if you live in Tokyo. If you live in Tokyo, that's very common. It's almost unheard of not to have pretty much eight, $900 rent. Some of them have found them. You can have to dig through some of the older sections of Tokyo, but most of the apartments that have the internet are clean, furnished, or anything like that are going to pay you're gonna pay a top dollar. 
Um, you just gotta make sure you kind of judge your price book and what you can afford and what you can't afford. It just, it's all those kind of variables. Um, with that being said, um, I recommend if you're moving to Japan, if you're coming here to be an ALT teacher, talk to someone, make a friend to inquire about apartments. And this is really, I hope for anybody, this is really important because understanding the apartment system here and all the little bylaws that come with it are very, very challenging. And this is the last thing I'm gonna mention on this topic is um, when you come to Japan, most places in Japan, you need a co-signer, okay? You need someone that who speaks Japanese or pretty much is Japanese that they can assess if you, you leave or something else. Um, this is a real big challenge I find for a lot of people, especially for me because I'm not Japanese, I don't have a Japanese friend assigned for me. This can cause a huge problem getting an apartment. So if you are gonna seek an apartment here and you get a job and you say, yes, I got that ALT job, I'm going, then ask your company and say, look, I don't want a 1LDK, I don't want a Leo Palace, I wanna go to a 2DK, I wanna go to a 2LDK, something a little bit bigger. It's gonna only be maybe $100 more a month, but the price of that extra $100 of your room, your space, your freedom, if you wanna create a work environment like I do, I have this work room now, uh, PlayStation, all my stuff for my other account, we have all of our film stuff. We are actually very happy that we have a small room, but a small a room that we can use for this kind of work now. So it'll be so much nicer. Uh, there will be more stuff coming. Sorry, it's been delayed. We've had moving, we have internet problems. Uh, I got hurt, I got sick. Lots and lots of stuff. So with all that being over with, back to work. As we always say, I am just a workaholic, but I do. I miss talking to you guys. I want you guys to kind of see. I want to get back into discussing these topics, these things that I think that people should know about Japan. Just for people who don't just come here, but people who want to move here, live here. So you're aware that you have more options. You have more availability. You have more things to help you. So I want to thank you guys all for watching. <clears throat> Sorry. Please like, comment, subscribe. Tell me what you guys think. If there's something you want to know about, tell me in the comment section. Don't, I know you guys always say nice video stuff. I appreciate it. But I want to hear what kind of things do you guys want to know about Japan? Or things that I don't know about Japan <clears throat> that I need to show you guys or tell help people who move here. Or things like that. Because there is a lot of things that people overlook. Um, as always, guys, stay tuned. I'll see you guys all next time. See you later.